So good afternoon. Uh, my name is Nick Hutton, and I'm the regional director for Asia for D2L or Desire to Learn. Uh, D2L is the company that created Brightspace, uh, one of the most popular learning management systems around the world. Uh, we were founded about 20 years ago uh, on a very simple mission and concept, which was to transform the way the world learns using the smart application of technology. Uh, we currently uh, have customers, clients around the world uh, in all sectors. Higher education was where we started, but also in schools, in colleges, uh, in corporations, uh, healthcare and government. Around about 1,300 customers and about 15 million learners using the Brightspace platform. What I'd like to talk to you about today is uh, how digital technology creates uh, better engagement between faculty and students. And I guess the first thing to mention is uh, what exactly is uh, the meaning of e-learning? I think there very often is a misinterpretation as to what e-learning really means. And I guess if you look at the stakeholders in any organization that's going to use technology uh, to support their teaching, uh, there are probably three sets. You have the administrators, uh, or the institution or organization's management. You obviously have the faculty or the teachers who are delivering the education. And of course, you have the students or the learners. And there are three main forms of e-learning. E-learning really is not just online learning. And I think it's worthwhile making the point uh, that it can cover a number of different areas. The first, of course, is if you as a faculty are teaching in your traditional way a class of students. So what technology or digital learning technology does is support you in that teaching. It gives you a number of tools and activities that essentially make you better at that teaching. Uh, a good example of that, uh, we have a, a customer in North America by the name of uh, Mohawk College uh, and a professor, Professor Sean Isles, he made a very interesting statement. He said that Brightspace allows me to teach the way I want to and it makes my teaching style 100 times more powerful. So you don't have to be online to use uh, a learning management system. The second form is what I would call either blended or hybrid. And that's where you're combining face-to-face -face teaching with technology. And you're using the flexibility of the technology to, some, to do some parts of, of your learning as a student. Uh, you could, for example, equate flipped classroom to blended learning, where essentially the student takes the class in their own time using the technology and then uses the class time to discuss the lesson with uh, the teacher. The other thing about blended or hybrid learning is it gives you an enormous amount of flexibility as both a student and a teacher to do other things with the time that you have available outside of the class. It also, of course, gives the institution a chance to manage their capacity better. If you're an institution that is looking to recruit a large number of new students and you simply don't have the classrooms to fit those students, then if you go for a blended or a hybrid learning approach, what you actually do is you release the capacity in your classrooms to take account of the extra students. So that's the second. And the third form of e-learning is fully online. And this is what a lot of people misinterpret e-learning to be. Fully online is only one form of it. Uh, and I'll give you an example. I ran a fully online business school in Singapore for five years. We recruited about 9,000 students across 72 countries. Uh, we delivered a very high class, uh, very quality, high quality MBA and a series of master's programs. Our students were working professionals who didn't have the time to go back to college to get a second degree. And so what they needed was the chance to do a degree online and fit it into their work-life balance. And again, that's a fully online uh, uh, delivery of uh, technology on a platform. For an institution, uh, particularly in the postgraduate area, but an institution that might be looking for uh, students from outside of 
um, their particular geography. Online can also become a very useful way to deliver uh, teaching and learning uh, using technology. So one of our major objectives with Brightspace is to focus on personalizing the learning experience to build the highest level of engagement for the student. And this is a major criteria to produce out outstanding outcomes. So what are some of the tools that you can use as a faculty to drive a high level of engagement with your students? Obviously, in the time I have allotted, I only have time to mention a few. Um, first of all, let's talk about real-time data. So one of the things that a learning management system, particularly Brightspace, can do for you is to create and deliver to the faculty what we call a student progress dashboard. And what that essentially does is identify students who are at risk very quickly and then enable you as a faculty to deliver automated feedback to those students to put them on the right learning path. And that creates a much higher level of engagement and personalization between faculty and students. You can also use data to do what we call predictive analytics. And that's essentially to help faculty to predict what kind of outcome a student will deliver. And that's important because, again, if at the beginning of a, school, of a, a college term or semester, as a faculty member, you're trying to understand how a student is going to perform, then the data that you've already built up within your institution using the technology will help you determine part of that outcome. The third tool, which we believe is very useful to help faculty create a very high level of engagement with their students, is what we call competency-based education. This is something that's becoming very important in North America. It's starting to become relevant in parts of Asia as well. This is a technology that enables the faculty to build the correct learning path for the student and focus on the competencies that he or she should focus on. In other words, not focus on the competencies that they already know. And that obviously creates the most efficient learning path for the student and of course ends up giving the student the best possible outcome. The other tool that I think is very useful uh, for creating a very high level of engagement between students and faculty is mobile or the ability to access your learning anytime, anywhere. Today's students expect to learn using any device and it increases that engagement with the faculty. Now imagine if you have a first year student uh, attending college now in 2019, they were born roughly in 2001. In 2007, Steve Jobs from Apple introduced the iPhone. So those students have grown up with nothing else but using those kinds of devices. So they expect to learn using those devices. They expect to learn uh, in any particular place or at any time. So being able to provide that technology is a very sure way to create that level of engagement between students and faculty. We recently at uh, D2L published a white paper called The Future of Work and Learning. And this talks about how the fourth industrial revolution is driving a massive increase in the demand for higher education, and in particular, lifelong learning, which of course can only be satisfied by the smart use of technology in learning and teaching, and therefore how important it is to use that technology to increase the level of personalization and engagement between the faculty and the students. If you'd like a copy of that white paper, um, please do call us or get in contact with us at uh, d2l.com. We'll be more than happy to make one available to you. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, then again, let us know at D2L. Thank you very much.